story. That's good. Um, I know it's expensive. I know it's really expensive because that's what I do. I'm an actress. I'm in the business. I, told I know everything. I know those things are very expensive. But uh, the only thing I can do, like if you can put like a little thing together and, you know, explain your story. You can, uh, I can have it. You can send it to me. I can send it to Oprah Production because I know Oprah does that. Help uh, people find a family because same thing happened to an African woman. And Oprah helped that girl uh, find her parents. So if you want, I can help you with that. You know, send it to Oprah's production in Chicago or uh, California. And, you know, they... You might be lucky enough, you know, yeah. she get into it and watch it. And, you know, she's she's a good woman. I love that woman. And, you know, that's what she does. She she helps people. And she, if she hear your story, she will help you. So that's the only thing I can offer. Actually, yeah, I, I, did, I did tell Judith that you are in, in the movie business and she knows that. So... Yeah, uh, yeah, I love uh, it. She, yeah, she does. She does have. Uh, she does have Oprah's protection uh, contact and address and whatever. She can help you with that. Uh, uh, now, thank you so much. That's amazing. Now, one thing that I you know, but, but do you know who Oprah is? Of course. Oh yeah. Oh, I know. <laughs> yeah, everybody does. <laughs> now let me let me ask you something. You mentioned something about uh, money. You are raising money for the for the production. If anybody, uh, if anybody watching and, and they want to, co to contribute um, to your case, uh, how can they do that? What's the process? We've got a, um, a site up. It's www.indiegogo. I'll spell that out because it's a bit of a funny one. It's I-N-D-I-E-G-O-G-O -G -O dot com. And they can go on there and search for adopted ID. It's just adopted and then the initials ID. And they can donate to the project that way, which would be absolutely fantastic. There it is. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, so Indiegogo.com. Just type in adopted ID. You'll see um, the trailer. You can watch the trailer again. And you can see the ways that you can easily donate online. So we really would welcome that. Uh, we set a target of $6,000, as I say, but obviously anything above and beyond that will just help us that much more to be able to spread spread the story. So we really thank everybody for, for taking a look at that and for donating. Ah, quick quick question. It's, it's really great that you're working on that documentary, you're working on, on finding your family. Tell me exactly what really sparked the entire process. I mean, what, I mean when did you decide you were going to look for your family? What sparked that? Well, since I was little, I've always sort of been, um, you know, I've always been asked questions about, you know, is that your real mom? Is that your brother? Is that your sister? Because obviously, except for my brother who's adopted, you know, besides the two of us, we're the only black ones in our family. So people always have been curious since I can remember. So that obviously for me, I've always had to answer questions. I've always had to respond to those questions. So growing up, I was always obviously very aware of being adopted and being different. And my parents were always very honest with me and they explained my story to me. You know, obviously as I got older, I found out little bits more, but I always knew that it would be very difficult to find my family. And I think when I was younger, I sort of accepted I couldn't find, um, couldn't find them because my parents actually did write to Haiti. Um, they knew some missionaries who were working in Haiti back in the 1980s and they wrote asking if they could find out some more information. And unfortunately, they came back with nothing. So I always sort of knew that. My parents explained it to me very clearly. But as I got older, I started to think, you know what? I've got to still try. I've got to put myself out there because if I don't put myself out there, it will be impossible for them to find me because they won't know where I've ended up. They won't know that I, you know, I was raised in Canada. They won't know that I now live in the United Kingdom. So I knew I had to take the first steps in making it a reality if I really wanted to find information. So it was sort of something that was stirring inside of me for several years. And it was actually, I moved to the United Kingdom in 2005. And that's when I just started to think about it more and more. And because I was away from my family, obviously, you know, it was an adjustment period myself. And I sort of began to think about it. And I just thought, I've got to do this. And as I said, I met Sonia the next year in 2006. And she was really excited and said, you know, you can do this. And I've had some wonderful friends along the way who've been so encouraging to me and, you know, supporting me in searching. So I just thought, you know what, I'm going to do it. So as I said, it started by visiting the nun who had power of attorney and she, you know, just shared my story and added little bits that I wasn't aware of. 
And from there, I just said, right, I've got, I've got to go back to Haiti. I knew I had to start in Haiti to do the search there. Okay. So now I know you are also a founding member of the UH UK. Uh, briefly, can you tell us more about it? What, what do you guys do? Definitely. When I came to the United Kingdom, um, I knew a few Haitians in Toronto, uh, but there wasn't sort of a large Haitian community there. It's, it's larger in Montreal. So coming to the United Kingdom, I thought, oh, I'm probably not going to run into any Haitians here. But through my work as a social worker, I started meeting a couple of, of other social workers who were Haitian. So it was really exciting. And basically, our community just started to grow and grow. And we started to you know, connect with one another in different forms. And we would meet socially and have Haitian food, which I love. And, you know, speak Creole, I would listen, um, play, you know, our, our zouk, our compa, and it was great. We had such a great time. But then we realized something. We realized we are privileged, you know, we, we are out of Haiti, we have opportunities here, and we need to make a difference. And so the group of us Haitians, and we started to get slightly bigger and bigger, we decided in 2008, we need to do something more for our people, you know, for our country, because we know that that's how Haiti will get stronger. And we knew that it started with the children. So we created UHUK, which is United Haitians in the United Kingdom. And we decided to begin by sponsoring a school in Haiti, um, in Carrefour, um, by Port-au-Prince. And we just started very simply and started to sponsor them. Obviously, since the earthquake happened um, in, you know, last year, our charity has just, the exposure has just come, you know, tenfold. We've been um, sought after by various media outlets here in the United Kingdom and other charities and wanting to know, realizing there was a Haitian community here because a lot of people aren't aware that we exist here. So it was really important that people knew our charity was here before the earthquake, we're here during the earthquake, and we're going to be here long after the earthquake. This is our country. These are our brothers and sisters. And to us, it was as simple as that. We need to help home. We want to see Haiti you know, be stronger, um, be a stronger country, and get back to the glory days, what it used to be like. So it was extremely important for us to start that charity, and it's really exciting. Pardon me, sorry. It's really exciting to see how it's growing and um, to also the fact that it's actually brought more Haitians together. And on the upside for myself, out of all sort of the, the disaster that we heard about from the earthquake, the charity actually brought me and my fiancé together, which was, an, an, a, I guess, a little icing on top, which was wonderful as well. That's great. Um, just before uh, Janelle asks you another question, uh, she, because as, as you may know, we do have a lot of people watching us all over Haiti, everywhere in, Fran in France and Canada, and they don't understand full English. And Janelle is going to translate, pretty, uh, like summarize everything you say in Creole right now, because we have people uh, in, in the chat room asking. So she's going to do that real, real quick for, for, for us. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so you finally admit that my Creole is better than yours, right? No. <laughs> okay, ahead. I'm not going to do it. Hey. Yeah, so finally what Judith was eh, saying, eh, it dit comme ça eh il t'a expliqué histoire comme on t'a expliqué histoire nous déjà, il y aller au cab, il fait il font pas que de bagarre, il c'est là il commencer vraiment et eh, pas vous poser yeah. de, de, de eh, te poser le question comme si qu'il est vraiment lui Ouais, comme si les vrais chercher vrais parents, les disent là toujours ça m'avait notre frère vraiment et petite maman et avec papa qui a adopté là tout le monde toujours a posé la question est-ce que ça c'est fort est-ce que ça c'est sort so les vins senti comme si les mêmes les besoin joindre vrais 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 parents et puis j'ai dit qu'on est eh, gagne une organisation une non profit organisation Non-profit organization, I, that's how I can say it. <laughs> so, he eh, commenced in Angleterre, and he could have been the moon, because he même li wè, en tant que young Haitian, qui pa même vive, young Haitian qui pa vive en Haïti, qui pa levé en Haïti, qui pa koné an yen de Haïti, li vle e de peyyan, pou peyyan, e, 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 sal vle wè li vle nou, e, e, kom si vin, Ferme encore pour nous camper sous pied, nous jump, jump à Haïti. Parce que les temps de l'histoire Haïti, les connaît Haïti était belle, les connaît nous terrer les Haïti, c'était Haïti qui chérit nous terrer les. So, les rentrer, les, les, les faire, ils ont formé une organisation non-profit pour aider, ils ont aidé Timoun en Haïti. So, les mêmes en tant qu'ils ont Haïtien qui va même lever l'autre bois, qui va même prendre si par an là, ni si par an pas là, nous, comment camper, jump pour les deux pays, nous, ta, 
Il est vraiment bon. Il y a bon c'est samedi. Bon me garde c'est samedi. Hey, you, did, you, you just got yourself a sister. So she, she, she just said, <laughs> yeah, you, are you know, the, her sister. Judith, you are my sister because you're doing a lot of good things. And you don't even know Haiti. You you didn't grow up there. You do you you don't know anything about Haiti, and you're trying to help. You know the kids and all that. You want us to go back the way we used to be. You want us to be strong and all that. So I love that about you, and I, you are my sister. <laughs> hey, you never know. You might be her sister for real. You yeah, my dad know. has a lot of kids. Her father has a lot of kids in Cap Haitian, okay. so you never know. Okay, so you we never have know. to talk. <laughs> anyway, you had, a yeah, question. you had a question. The question that I have, Judith, I was when I was watching the tape, I see that uh, there was a woman. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, I was paying attention to to the tape. <laughs> uh, there was a woman uh, who the same thing happened to her like not like the same thing but she had a baby yeah. and she put the baby on the street and she went somewhere what that's how she said she went somewhere to do something and when she come back she couldn't find the baby the baby was gone did you do any like dna tests for that woman we actually um with all the families that came forward we did um we did. <laughs> it's um, we did a couple of DNA tests actually, and people have to watch the film to find it what happens. But we did. We um, we knew that was part of the process that we had to do, obviously, to, in order to verify, um, to find out if you know if it was indeed a biological match because the stories, so many of the stories were there were similarities. So we needed to make sure we we definitely had the right people. So that was something that we did um, right up. You know, the very last day we were there, we were still scrambling, getting DNA tests done. So it was quite a, quite a process, quite an intense process, in fact. So how, how, yeah, long, how long did you spend down there? Pardon, sorry? How long did you stay in Haiti for? We were in Haiti for a month. Um, it was, yeah, a month, uh, 30 days we were there, and I loved every day. <laughs> it was amazing. I'm eager to go back well, as soon good. as I can. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I love the people because uh, the people from like Cape Haitian. I love all my Haitian, but uh, even Fabrice admitted when I when I took Fabrice to Cape Haitian, we went to the beach and everything, and we went to the restaurant. You know, did you go to Boulevard? Um, I'm not sure. That, no we went to Labadee Beach. Yeah, it's just like in the middle of a. It, 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 it just they have a this. They have the sea and they have all the restaurants. They have like clubs, like white. Eh, eh. It's like a main <laughs> street. On one side, they have the water. On the other side, they have all restaurants and clubs and things like that. It's a very nice place in Cap Haitian. I think so because we did. We went to a couple of clubs. We went to like a blackout party. Which was <laughs> very, did you go to Lakai? <laughs> Because you couldn't see anybody who was asking you to dance, so you're dancing, <laughs> you know, you had no idea what they looked like. So yeah, and when I took Fabrice there, he said, Gina, why people left, you know, Cape Haitian and go to Port au Prince for? Because he said, if we were just on the street, like one o'clock, two o'clock, you know, we were having fun and no worries, and you know, and he said that, oh my God, when you go, because when I go to Haiti, I stay at his mom's house for like two weeks or a week. And he said, what are you doing in port au If you have this beautiful home and all that, what are you doing in port au You know, and the people, they very nice. Even the kids, the who, you know, the one who's begging for food and, yeah. and things like that. Even them, Fabrice love them because they're nice and they, they talk to you. It's unbelievable. I just love, I just love my home. All right, so yeah. that's good. You know, once again, I, I, I am very very um, happy that we are having this conversation with judith um as i promise i will do whatever i can um to to help you um we might not be well equipped uh to to do everything that you need us to do but we will help you you know to get your story out there um also so one thing that we will do since the show is recorded uh one side one after the show maybe tomorrow